Hey guys, welcome back to another new video on PS4 Linux. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Proxmox for PS4. You guys would remember a coffee goal that I had started a few months back in order to develop Proxmox for PS4. So what is Proxmox? Proxmox is a virtualization OS exclusively made for virtualization actually, which has a web admin GUI. While most of this might sound gibberish to you, all of this will be made clear in this video, but I'm going to show you how this works and stuff. Before we begin this video, I'm just going to give you a heads up. This is not the normal kind of, you know, like VirtualBox or QMU kind of uh, virtualization software that is Proxmox. This is quite different because this uses a web admin GUI. While most of you might not be accustomed to this, it will be shown in this video. While this particular setup has both advantages and disadvantages, it is highly subjective. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to let you decide. OK, so what are we going to cover in this video? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you could get Proxmox running on your PS4. This will include all the pre-installation steps, the installation steps and the post-installation steps. And that takes me directly to the requirements for running Proxmox on your PS4. Obviously, first, you're going to require a jailbreakable PS4. And once you have that, you will need a modified kernel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to modify the kernel, which options to enable and stuff like that. OK, and talking about the modified kernel, you will also require Ethernet. That is a working Ethernet connection. So here is where most of you might be confused. Why do I say that Ethernet is mandatory? Let me explain. OK, so Proxmox will be running on your PS4 and you're probably going to run another OS like uh, Windows on this Proxmox. So you get the idea of virtualization. OK, but if you were to use Wi-Fi instead of uh, Ethernet while running Proxmox, you might not be able to share the Internet connection to your VM, that is your virtual machine. For example, Windows getting Wi-Fi passed through to this virtual machine might be extremely difficult. That is why I recommend that you get Ethernet. So many of you guys are still confused because uh, most of you have PS4s that don't have a working Ethernet port when it comes to Linux. It works perfectly fine on Orbis, but when it comes to Linux, the Ethernet port is not detected, right? And I've got a solution for you too. You can get a USB to Ethernet adapter. They come very cheap. You can just get a USB 2.0 depending on your connection speed. But if you have a very high speed connection, then I would recommend that you get a USB 3.0 adapter. Just make sure that it is supported on Linux before you buy it. Actually, there is a detailed tutorial on adding driver for these adapters. I have made a video on that and I also have a textual article. Both of these will be linked in the description. Do check that out for that. OK, that covers the modified kernel portion. Next, you're going to need an ram FS file. And for that, you can use any init ram FS, for example, PSE, Touch, NASCII or whatever you have been using. Everything is fine. OK, you don't have to modify it in any way. Just the kernel has to be modified. OK, and the next requirement is another device that is another Internet capable device, which can be connected to the same network as your PS4. So this is what I was talking about. The web admin GUI does require another device. I know that many of you are still confused, but all of this will be made clear in this video. So just keep watching. OK, so let us now directly get into the installation part. Strictly speaking, the pre-installation part where we'll be modifying the kernel for use with Proxmox for PS4 and then install Proxmox to USB drive. I'm not going to be covering covering that in this video because it has already been covered multiple times and you can choose any installation method for that part. You could use the usual rescue shell method or even my um, alternate pasta method, which has another video of its own. Again, that would be linked in the description to check that out. OK, so in this portion, that is the pre-installation part, we're just going to cover the modification of the kernel. OK, so when it comes to the kernel, you can just go through my AIO article that talks in deeply about which kernel to choose for your PS4. If you are pretty new to this process, to put it in a nutshell, this kernel that your PS4 requires for running Linux depends on the Southbridge that it has. Again, you can check the AIO article to find out the Southbridge version of your PS4. Once you have that out of the way, you can move on to the next step that is getting the source code of the kernel that you prefer to use with Proxmox. In my case, I have a Baikal Southbridge for my PS4 and I'm going to use 5.4.213 kernel for this particular purpose. And this was provided by Bytehacker, the dev. Now, this is the source code that is hosted on GitHub. You can check the download section of ps4linux.com, which again will be linked in the description for the source code of various kernels for various different versions of Southbridges of PS4. OK, once you have decided on the kernel that you're going to use, go to the GitHub page. Most of these are hosted on GitHub pages. If it is hosted on GitHub, you can directly download the code by going into code and then copying this uh, link here by clicking here. And then you will obviously need a Linux system for this. I don't have to say it specifically. This Linux kernels can be built on Linux systems only. So in this case, I'm going to be using a virtual machine running Lubuntu. So I'm going to go into my desktop next and because this is where I'm going to download the source code of the Linux kernel. As you can see, it has already been downloaded on my computer. But uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could download it on your own. So I have just opened a terminal on desktop and then I'm going to type git space clone space and then paste the link that we copied in the earlier step and then press enter. This will take some time depending on your internet connection speed and your hard drive speed. 
and once it is done you will find something like this on your desktop so i'm going to go into the folder and this will have multiple folders what is of importance to us is the config file okay this config file might be named different depending on the kernel that you're using and stuff for example uh, bitehaxer has provided it in the form of config the name is config what i'm going to do first of all is i'm going to right click here and then rename it to dot config okay and then press enter now some of these kernel sources don't have a config file so what can you do then there are multiple options i'm going to list some of these options the first one is uh, contacting the dev for the config file they might or might not provide that if you're not able to get in touch with the dev or um, not able to get the config you might try using another config for example this one has a config file you could try using this for an aeolia or a belize motherboard might or might not work but it's a good starting point you can just work your way up from there okay or if you're an expert in this matter you could make your own config file from scratch okay that's a bit of a headache especially when it comes to ps4 so i'll just recommend that you get an idea from already existing configs and modify yours accordingly okay so in this case uh, i do have a config file so i'm going to go into tool and open terminal in this folder and then i'm going to type make space menu config this will open up the kernel modification menu and first of all i'm going to make sure that this virtualization option is enabled you can browse through these options using your arrow keys and as you can see uh, to the left of this virtualization within this uh, brackets i have an asterisk which means that this is enabled if this was not enabled something like this is what you would see and uh, to enable it all you have to do is press on y so that enables it and then i'm going to go into the virtualization menu by pressing enter and then i'm going to make sure that these two options are enabled that is kvm and kvm for amd process support as you can see both of these have an asterisk prefix to them so this shows me that they are enabled now i'm going to press on the forward slash key this will open up a search menu and then i'm going to type io underscore u ring okay and then press enter as you can see right here it says is equal to n this tells me that this option is not enabled by default and the corresponding number right here is one so i'm going to press on one to go to that option directly and then i'm going to press on y to enable it so these are the major options that need to be enabled to get proxmox working on your ps4 but remember this does not give you the full potential of proxmox i'm specifically talking about gpu pass through which has not yet been attained on ps4 i will be working on this and uh, you can also contribute to the process okay for now these are the basic options to get the basic functionality of proxmox working on ps4 GPU pass through and some other advanced stuff will be worked on in the future if and when time permits. Okay. For now, this is enough. And once you are uh, satisfied with the settings, just go to save and press enter and uh, press OK and exit and then press escape multiple times to come back to the terminal like here. And now we're going to compile the kernel. For that, I'm going to type M A K E space hyphen J. And then there has to be a digit. This digit corresponds to the cores your processor has. For example, if you have a quad core processor, that is a four core processor, you would type five here, that is four plus one. If you're doing this on PS4, which is an octa core processor, the number would be nine here, that is eight plus one, okay? Once that is decided, press space and then type small b, small z, and then capital I, small m, small a, small g, small e, and then press enter. This will compile the kernel for us, okay? This might take some time if you're doing it for the first time. Okay, uh, I have already done this, so it just took a few seconds. But in your case, it might take from a minute to five minutes or maybe 10 minutes. Okay, just wait for it to complete. Once it is complete, it will see the BZ image is ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this folder and then arch x86 and then boot. And as you can see, the BZ image or the kernel is ready right here. Now you can copy this kernel into the FAT32 partition of your proxmox usb drive or uh, whatever method you're using okay and also copy the init ram fs of your liking to this folder the installation as i've already said has been covered multiple times in multiple videos so we are not going to talk about that in this video now assuming that you have set up your proxmox drive for ps4 we're going to move on to my ps4 and then use the linux payload to get into proxmox okay now i'm on my ps4 and as you can see i have the exploit page that is the ps4 linux exploit page on my ps4 right now now this goes without saying that before we begin loading the linux payload you need to have the proxmox usb drive connected to your ps4 okay you will also have to connect the ethernet cable okay for this purpose you can use either the ethernet port on your ps4 given that it works on linux or as i already mentioned in the video you can use an ethernet adapter regardless of the method that you use just make sure that the ethernet cable is connected at this step itself okay now I'm going to go into the Linux payload section and then I'm going to use the 1GB VRAM payload. You can choose any of these uh, payloads as you wish. I'm going to use the 1GB VRAM payload. Okay. 
and there it is proxmox for ps4 how do i install a vm onto this how do i access this vm how do i check the stats of this vm these are some questions that are popping in your head right now right so this is where the web admin gui of proxmox comes in as i had already mentioned in the video this is not going to look like the usual virtualization software like virtualbox and qmu so in order to access the settings of proxmox on ps4 you're going to need another device that is internet capable you could technically even use your phone for that okay actually there is a proxmox ve application on play store for android you could check that out too i have not yet tried it but so that i have complete functionality i'm going to use the web admin gui on my desktop okay you could choose any other device that has internet connection just make sure that both the device that you're connecting to and the ps4 are connected to the same network you can have one of these on ethernet and the other on uh, wi-fi but the thing is that you'll have to make sure that both of these are connected to the same router or the modem but before we actually get into the web admin gui of proxmox we'll have to set up ethernet or internet on proxmox for that i'm going to log in to my proxmox setup the username would be root and the password is ps4 okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to type ip space a of our interest is this particular adapter called eth0 eth0 the name might be different in your case it might start with emp in some cases so make a note of this particular combination of letters and words that is given right here eth0 and below that to the right of inet you will find an ip address as you can see right here there will be an IP address like 192.168.1.1 for example and after that there would be a forward slash and then a two digit number in most cases. You will have to make a note of the whole thing that is the IP address and after that the slash and the number that comes after it. Okay, So there are three things that you have to make a note of the name of the adapter in this case F0 and the IP address as I have said. So if you have made a note of all of these now we are ready to set up the rest of it. So next I am going to type nano space slash etc slash hosts and this will open up this file and as you can see it just has a 192 point here so i'm going to add the rest of it right now it is for the sake of security i'm not providing my ip address right here yours will be different uh, so so type that here accordingly do not change this text that is ps4 linux and also just provide the ip address we had made a note of the whole IP address and after that there was a slash and the number. You remember that, right? You don't have to provide anything after the slash or for that matter, the slash. Provide everything before the slash. That is only the IP address, okay? So once you have provided that here, we'll have to save the file. So for that, press on Control S first and then Control X to exit, okay? Once we have edited the host file, we're going to edit the next file. For that, I'm going to type nano again and then a space slash etc slash network okay slash interfaces to have basic access to web admin gui all you have to do is change this particular text right here this is h0 in my case as we had made a note of that in the first step itself it was h0 in my case if it is anything different in your case just change that here replace h0 with whatever was given to you in the first command that is ip space a so you'll have to change h0 in two places that is after auto and after i face once you have made sure of that, just press Ctrl S and Ctrl X together. And right now we are ready to access the web admin GUI. Okay. And right now I'm on my PC and I'm going to access the web admin GUI. To do that, I'm going to type HTTPS colon slash slash and then the IP address without the slash and stuff. You just need the IP address right here. Okay. I'm going to type that in. So once you have the IP address typed in, you'll have to type colon again and then type 8006 and then press enter and this is a warning that you will get just ignore it you can go into advanced and uh, click on proceed depending on your browser this might be different but anyways you can advance okay and after that you'll have to log into proxmox panel for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to type root as username and password as you have already seen as ps4 you will have to change this eventually okay just for security purposes you will have to change this anyways this is what we have right now this is the panel this is the web admin gui for proxmox everything that you will have to do on proxmox beginning with starting a virtual machine to managing it everything can be done right here as you can see if you go into summary you will find the cpu and memory usage right here now in the next video that i'm going to upload i'll also show you how to install windows 10 on proxmox for ps4 now before we actually go ahead and install a virtual machine we have to make a small change to network again this is to make sure that our virtual machines have access to the internet and for that we'll have to add a virtual bridge okay 
So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on PS4 Linux right here and go to shell. We did make a few changes to the host file and interfaces file right now, right? Now we can do it directly from our browser itself. We don't have to go back to the PS4. For that, we can use the shell option. In fact, you could also SSH into the PS4 right now. Okay, I'm just going to use the shell option for now. And it has already logged in as root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type nano space slash etc slash network slash interfaces okay and then press enter so here we have it and what i'm going to do is i'm going to uncomment all of these lines uncommenting just basically means that you'll have to delete all the hashes or pounds that are in front of it so i'm going to do that right now just delete them one by one okay and now after the address, I'm going to give a space and then provide the IP address. And this time we're going to provide the complete address. And after that, the slash and the two digit number that we had. Okay. Once you have added the IP address along with the slash and the two digit number, you will have to come here. That is to bridge ports and check the name that comes after it. You will have to make sure that this is exactly the name that we had seen in the first step. And then go back to this portion that is uh, zeros portion and change the DHCP value to manual. Okay. Once you have done that, you'll have to save this file to do that. Press on control S first and then control X. Okay. So we have edited the interfaces file right now. Now we will have to restart the networking so that the VMBR zero, that is the network bridge is successfully detected by PS4 Proxmox. Okay. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type slash ETC slash init dot D slash networking and then a space and then restart. This will restart the networking. Okay yeah it is done so now we'll have to check if the bridge has been successfully detected by proxmox for that i'm going to go back to this basic admin gui and then i'm going to go into the networks and as you can see vmbr0 is showing up right here and it is showing up as active so it is ready for use and in the next video i'm going to show you how you could install windows 10. that's it for this video guys if you did like this make sure that you click on that like button smash that subscribe button and also click on the bell button if you need updates as soon as i post a new video and by the way if you can please consider donating to the cause uh, it will help me keep these projects alive it will help me work further on proxmox bringing gpu pass through hopefully it's a very difficult task but i will try my best and that's a promise okay if you do find this useful please consider donating so that i can keep this work up and continue doing this for the community okay and that's it for this video guys bye bye